Hey there, my friend, welcome. This is Dr. Anthony Walduzzi, founder of the Fit Father Project and the Fit Mother Project. And in today's video, we're gonna talk about the muscle building workout plan for beginners. And this is for you, if you're starting to get interested in strength training, you wanna build some muscle and you wanna make sure you're doing it in the right way that actually skits you results, but it's not necessarily overtaxing your body. Because the fact of the matter is, is the way you train in the beginning of your muscle building and strength training journey is different than when you train in an intermediate phase and in an advanced phase. So in today's video, I'm going to break down um, five of the most important things that you need to know. We're going to talk about the actual training split, how many days per week you should be working out, the kind of exercises. We're going to touch on nutrition, sleep, and recovery. We're going to talk about supplements. I know you're going to learn a ton in today's video. So get out your pen and paper, take some notes, and let's dive on in. FitFatherProject.com All right, so let's get straight into today's video on the best muscle building workout plan for beginners. And I love this topic and it's pretty nostalgic for me because in creating this video, it made me like think back to the beginning of my muscle building journey and the kind of advice I would have told myself when I started strength training when I was 10. And I started lifting weights when I was 10 after my dad passed away. Um, and I wanna start lifting to be able to be strong and take care of my mom, my little brother. Um, and I had no idea what I was doing at the time. But if I did, this is the advice I'd kind of go back in time in the time capsule and give myself. Um, so I'm excited to impart this advice to you. Now, there are so many different ways that you could start your muscle building journey. So this is my personal philosophy on what I think is best after my 20 plus years of experience in strength training and I used to be a former national champion bodybuilder. So I know a thing or two about muscle building and this is where I'd recommend you start. So let's dive in right now and talk about training. When you're building muscle and you're in a beginner phase, you do not need to work out every single day. You don't need to work out that often. In fact, it's optimal because your body needs to get good at recovering from workouts to I'd say do strength training three times per week. And remember, muscles grow outside of the gym. They don't grow when you work out. Working out is the stimulus to get your body increasing protein synthesis so you build muscle. So I recommend a training split when you're a beginner, something like a Monday, Wednesday, Friday, where you have at least one day off in between sessions. And I recommend you train your full body every single time. These old school full body training routines three times per week is amazing for beginners for a couple reasons. One, um, yes, we wanna build muscle, but two, you also have to get a lot of practice at the main lifts because you're just starting out your journey and it's just as important for you to get good at squats and pull-ups and bench presses and shoulder presses as it is to actually build the muscle. Exercise motions, these big compound motions, um, require some neural learning. Your nervous system has to learn how to activate those specific muscles. You gotta get your form down. So it's really important in the beginning that you get more repetitions in. And that's why it's better to do three times a week full body training where you're training these motions frequ frequently so the learning's happening as opposed to doing like a chest day and then your chest is so sore that you're not gonna train chest for another seven days. We need to prioritize learning alongside of the getting stronger on these main compound lifts. So three days per week, full body strength training. And here's what I would make it even better. I would say that two of those days, let's say it's a Monday, Wednesday, Friday, on Monday and Friday, we do classic strength training. And I'm going to get into the exercises and uh, the actual, you know, kind of way to create your workout. And in the middle of those two days on Wednesday, I recommend you do body weight, calisthenics, things like pull-ups, things like push-ups, things like handstand holds, because I want you to start getting strong in a variety of different strength training exercises. You'd be shocked. There are people who strength train for 10 plus years who could do a lot of overhead military presses but can't do a handstand push-up. Why? Because we get good at what we practice and I want you to have a well-rounded strength training base that involves both the free weights, some machines, and a lot of calisthenic stuff too. So personally, how I'd set up my training split, Full body strength training on Monday in the gym or at home with actual weights. Wednesday would be calisthenics. Friday would be the, another revisit of that full body strength training session. So let's break down what those workouts essentially look like. And the way I want you to think about your workouts when you're in the beginner phase is not about like, I need to do these specific exercises because I heard that a bench press is great for a big chest. I want you to think about motions planes of motions that your body naturally does. So we're gonna actually break your workout out into different motions. Well, one primary motion that you know is phenomenal for muscle building is squatting. Squatting, 
bending our legs, hinging our hips, whether we're picking something off the floor like a deadlift or we have weight on our back and we're doing a classic barbell back squat, squatting is absolutely essential. So we're gonna kick off our workouts with squatting. And I recommend a classic five by five set scheme, set and rep scheme here because this enables you to go fairly heavy so you can actually get used to carrying some load on your back um, and it gives you lots of different reps. So if every workout on that Monday and that Friday, you'll get 25 reps of squats. And this could be a barbell back squat. This could be a front squat. It could even be a leg press, although I would recommend that you try to do some kind of free weight squat. But if you really feel that leg press is calling to you right now in the beginning of your training session, you might be a little nervous about your form, that's fine too. Point being is we're kicking your workout off, your strength training workouts with leg motions, five by five. Five sets of five reps. You do a set of five reps, you wait for about, rest for about two minutes. Then you do your next set, then rest. Next set, rest. Two minute rest in between those sets is important. Make sure you're recovered. So that first exercise will take you around um, 10, 10 to 12 minutes, and it'll be the primary focus of your workout is getting that good leg strength. As your legs get stronger, the rest of your body's gonna get stronger. You can build a lot of muscle just getting strong in the back squat alone. Now to continue this idea of breaking up your workouts based on body motions, the next thing we're gonna do is a horizontal pull, AKA a row. So there's pulling. Anytime we're pulling a bar towards our body, we're using our back and our biceps. Anytime we're pushing, we're using our chest, shoulders, triceps. So when we're horizontal pull is some kind of row motion. Vertical pull, some kind of pull up. So we're gonna start with a horizontal pull. So any kind of row, this could be a bent over barbell row. This could be a two arm dumbbell row. This could be some kind of rowing machine at your gym. But after the squats, we're going to do your rows. And I recommend that you do three sets of somewhere around six to 12 reps. Honestly, it really doesn't matter too much. And when you're in the beginning, which particular rep scheme you pick. I personally would err on the side of going a little bit higher rep when you're beginning. So you can use a little bit of a lighter weight and you actually get more reps to practice. So let's say you choose a bent over barbell row um, for three sets of 12 reps. That would be your second motion. Your third motion is a horizontal push. So this is something like a bench press. Um, this is something like a incline bench press, a dumbbell bench press. You're pushing something away from your body. This is different than a vertical push, like an overhead. That would be a shoulder press. We'll get to that in just a second. But essentially we did a squat, a horizontal pull, a horizontal push. So some kind of pressing motion. And I would recommend if you're starting out and your shoulders are nice and healthy, that you do learn the barbell um, or the incline barbell bench press. Amazing motion for your chest. Um, and I'd also say that's also in the th three sets of six to 12 reps. Start light, you're gonna build strength over time. That will be your third exercise of this workout. And then we're gonna move on to a vertical pull. So vertical pull is some kind of pull up or a lat pull down. I would recommend you do pull ups, any kind of grip, wide, neutral, even chin ups. One of the best back building exercises, something that you're gonna be using for the rest of your strength training uh, career. If you're not strong enough to do pull ups yet, that's fine. You can start with some kind of lat pull down um, machine until you get strong, uh, strong enough. The point being one, a vertical pull, three sets of six to 12 reps. Again, the rep scheme is not super important. What is important is that you're getting the reps in and you're getting the volume in. And then after that, we're gonna go to a horizontal, uh, I'm sorry, a vertical push. So we want vertical pull, then vertical push. So some kind of overhead shoulder press. You could do a seated barbell military press. You could do a dumbbell shoulder press, standing or seated. Something where you're pressing overhead to really engage the shoulders in that plane of motion. Again, three sets of six to 12 reps. So I hope you kind of see the concept here. We're starting off with five by five on the squats, then the rest of these motions, the rows, the pushes, the pulls, the presses are all three by six to 12. And then we're gonna round out the workout with some arms and some abs, just as a little bit of finisher. So I would say I would personally do a superset of some kind of arm exercise, some kind of bicep curl with maybe a triceps press down um, or a close grip push up, but do one set of biceps, six to 12 reps, one set of triceps. You'll do that superset three times um, and then you can add throw abs in at the end, some kind of plank hold for one to two minutes, a hanging leg raise. This kind of accessory stuff at the tail end is a time where you actually can play around with some different motions. You don't necessarily have to use the same exercises for your arms and your abs at the end of the workouts because remember, and this is a key point is your strength training. Your arms are trained in all of these other big motions. In fact, there's some EMG research where they actually study the amount of muscle activity and it shows that your biceps get worked harder on chin-ups than almost any other bicep exercise. So point being is you're gonna get big arms by getting strong on your rows and your presses, et cetera, but you can do some arm work at the end. You can superset it if you wanna save time, which again means doing a set of biceps, straight into a set of triceps, and then you rest. So no rest in between. And then you can even make a circuit between a set of biceps, a set of triceps, then a core plank hold and you repeat that whole circuit. 
That stuff is like up to you. You can play around, try some different motions, but here's what I do recommend. In your two strength training workouts per week, you do the same motions. So you, you do this exact workout. Let's say you go squat, barbell row, barbell bench press, uh, pull up, overhead shoulder press, barbell curl, tricep press down, plank hold. You do that workout on Monday, you do that exact same workout on Friday. Those same exercises, because that is a perfect segue into number two, the concept of progressive resistance. As you're beginning your strength training journey, the most important thing is that you're getting stronger. That's why it's called strength training. So I wanna make sure that you're actually logging your weights Either use it on your phone, take out the notes application on your phone, or get a physical journal log, which I personally did throughout the first 10 years of my lifting career. I always kept a little notebook and I wrote down my weights. And when I go to my Friday training session, I look back, what did I do on Monday? How, did I hit my rep targets? If so, you need to increase your weight. Increasing your strength is what helps coax your body to build muscle. And here's the thing, when you're starting your strength training journey, your body will get stronger a lot faster. Um, because neurologically, your body is gonna get a lot more efficient at recruiting the muscle that you have. And I'm gonna make up these numbers, and the, and the numbers aren't important, but the concept is, when you begin strength training, um, it takes a while in the first couple months of exercise for your body to even get good at using the muscle you have. You might be at 30% efficiency, maybe 50% efficiency. So you have 100% of muscle, but when you're recruiting your muscle and exercise, you're only using 50% of your potential. But as you get stronger, as you get more reps in, as you do more workouts, your efficiency goes up. So you may be recruiting after four, five, six weeks of strength training, 70% of your muscle recruitment. And in time, as you train for lots of years, you can get up to very high muscle recruitment patterns, and then your body's also building a lot of muscle. So you're gonna get more efficient, which is why you're gonna get stronger quickly, which is why you gotta log your weights. So that's the concept of progressive resistance. When you hit your rep targets, you, you increase the weight on your next training session. And this almost like begs the point as well, is when you're starting these initial workouts, start light. Start light so you can actually hit those rep targets and build on a good foundation. A big mistake people make is they start way too heavy and they, do, they build on reps of bad form. I wanna make sure your form is good from day one so the reps that you're building on are honest and good progress. So you're actually gonna be able to build on a solid foundation. So before we get to number three, food, sleep supplements, I wanna backtrack because I did say that one day per week in between those two strength training days, you wanna do a calisthenics workout. And I think it's a great idea. And I think what you should do is a lot of squats. You should do body weight squats. You should play around with doing single leg squats. Um, put your leg up on a, a chair and do some single leg squats. Try to work on a pistol squat, which is where you have you know, one leg out in front of the other and you're kind of squatting down like this. Build strength in your legs from calisthenics. So you'd start your workout again with some squatting motions. Play around with it. This, this doesn't need to be a super complicated um, write down your reps workout like your other two strength training sessions, but start with your legs, do some squats, work both legs for about five minutes or so, and then you're gonna move on to either um, maybe some pull-ups, some kind of vertical pulling. So you might do a couple sets of pull-ups. If you can't do pull-ups yet, get an elastic stretch band, um, put it around your legs, and it can assist you. And we have a video that I'll link below in the description on how to do a pull-up if you can't do a pull-up that shows you these things. But get good at working on those pull-ups, especially if you were choosing a lap pull-down or something like that on your strength training days. This calisthenics workout is a great time for you to practice the strength from the pull-up. Do some push-ups, work your chest for about five, 10 minutes, set a rep target for yourself. Maybe you're saying, I wanna do 100 push-ups this workout. Get them done, change the angles, the grips, play around with it, get strong at that. And I'd also recommend you do some handstand holds if you can. Learn to kick your feet up on a wall and hold yourself overhead. It's really gonna help keep your shoulder stable and that shoulder stability and health is gonna be essential as you continue to lift years down the road. You want a stable shoulder, stable scapula, which is your shoulder blade. The stability of that's gonna ultimately equal the healthier shoulders. And if you talk to lifters who've been lifting for 10, 15, 20 years, a lot of them have shoulder problems because they didn't build on a good foundation of scapular stability. Handstand holds are gonna be very good for that. And then that's what I'd recommend you do. It's a lighter workout, play with it. If you can do it outside, even better, you're gonna get some sunshine. But treat those two classic strength training workouts as your logged workouts. And on the calisthenic days, find some different exercises. Work some core, work some push-ups, work some pull-ups, work some squats, try your single legs, that's what I do here. So now we're gonna skip, we talked about progressive resistance. Let's skip down to food, sleep, and water. Listen, we I opened this video with the concept that muscles are built outside of the gym. You get stronger uh, because weight training is the stimulus, but then you actually need to fuel your body with sleep and nutrition. So the first thing is I wanna make sure you're eating enough. 
So many people, when they start the strength training workouts um, as beginners, they're just not eating enough food and your body's not gonna progress if you're not eating enough food. So my recommendation is you scroll below in the description, you open up our Fit Father muscle building calorie calculator that's gonna enable you to punch in your height, weight, age, and general activity level, and it's gonna kick out the number of calories um, that you burn each day, and I want you to eat around 250 to 500 over that. So let's say that you are a uh, 40-year-old man um, and you, uh, have a moderately active job, you might burn 2,700 calories a day. For muscle building purposes, you might wanna go to 3,000. And you go to 3,000 um, and you roughly estimate these calories. I don't say you have to track every single calorie, but you gotta have a ballpark and you weigh yourself regularly. And if you're not gaining weight, increase the food. If you're gaining weight too fast, and I would say more than a pound a week, then scale back the food a little bit. And th there is a danger when you're starting off to just eat so much crappy food, and then you're just putting on fat instead of muscle. So you wanna keep it in a reasonable target, but that's why I think weighing yourself is really essential when you're starting strength training. We want your weight to be going up gradually. I think a pound a week of quality weight is fantastic and achievable. If you're gaining like two, three pounds a week, you're definitely putting on fat. So you might wanna scale it back. And if the scale's not moving at all, you gotta increase your food intake. One good thing to think about essentially um, is make sure that you're getting at least three meals per day. Um, and that's not to say that you can't build muscle intermittent fasting, but I think when you're a beginner and you're strength training, um, prioritizing enough calories is a really great deal. So I would say getting at least um, a breakfast, lunch, and dinner with ideally a snack in between. And if each of those meals is around 600 to 700 calories, then you're probably gonna be around that 2,100 to 3,000 calorie range, which is a good starting point for most people. But again, we gotta figure out your numbers. So you have that calorie calculator, it's 100% free, it's in the description, it's a Google Sheets, open that up and you can start doing that. And of course, if you want to actually have a full done for you plan that gives you every workout, every set, every rep, the full nutrition plan, the full meal plan, the full supplementation plan, my team and I have that. The program is called Old School Muscle. We'll also link that below in the description. It's just 97 bucks for lifetime access and it gives you all this, all the printouts, everything, all the recipes. So you don't have to do any thinking. Um, that's a resource for you as well in the description. So um, we talked about food, you need to eat enough. Sleep, absolutely essential. And I'm just gonna go flat out and be blunt here. If you're not getting at least six hours, but I would really say at least seven and a half hours of quality sleep, you are shortchanging your muscle building results. Sleep is essential. It's when your growth hormone rises. It's when your body recovers and heals from all the hard training you're doing. If you're under sleeping, your cortisol levels are gonna be high and your muscle building results are gonna be lower than they could be. So get the quality sleep in. And that might meaning turn off the phone, get rid of the TV at night, make sure you have a set bedtime and a set wake up time. And actually, if you have sleeping problems, the more you start to strength train, it's gonna help your body get a better circadian rhythm. You'll be more tired at night, so that's a really good thing. And water. Um, what I would say is basically drink more water than you're drinking. For most people who want to strength train, they should be drinking around um, at minimum a half a gallon of water, maybe up to a gallon and a half of water per day. And again, that depends on how active your job is, how much water you normally have, but increasing your water intake is going to be phenomenal, especially during your workouts. It's going to help keep your energy levels up. And I would throw a little bit of a pinch of some pink Himalayan sea salt in your water. So I'd say around one quarter to one eighth teaspoon per gallon of water, because the pink Himalayan sea salt has all these trace minerals that your body also needs to stay hydrated. It's not just water, it's also water plus minerals. So that is great. You need to get the hydration. And that's why you see a lot of people in the gym carrying around the gallons of water because they know it makes them feel better, perform better, and they're not getting as dehydrated. So number four, let's talk about supplements to wrap this up. I know this is getting a long video, but I really want to be comprehensive with you and make sure you have all the resources. And of course, we have other things in the description, other videos, that old school muscle building program. And I have a free video for you as well in the description. I'll tell you about that in a second. But supplements. Um, a lot of guys who are starting out make the mistake of thinking they need these fancy muscle building supplements like a testosterone booster or some kind of fancy pre-workout. All that pretty much is crap. It's really not even that effective. What you do need though is a quality multivitamin because the process of building muscle requires that you have all these other enzymatic reactions working well. And those enzymatic reactions require the vitamins and minerals that we need every single day. So we're gonna be eating a lot of food and ideally it's quality food, but sometimes we're not able to hit all of our micronutrient targets, meaning our vitamins and minerals. That's why a quality multi is great. It covers your bases. It's an insurance policy to make sure that you're getting your vitamins and minerals in. I would take that daily and that's not getting you out of eating good food. Still want you to eat high quality food, but the multis like covers your basis. Next thing is vitamin D3. 
I would say for most guys around 1,000 to maybe up to 5,000 IUs per day. And this depends on where you live, how much sunshine you're getting, but vitamin D3 is an essential hormone. Although it's a vitamin, it also acts as a hormone for increasing your immune system. It can boost your testosterone levels naturally, helps you recover from your strength training workouts. It is absolutely foundational. And what I'd even recommend is you don't need to supplement with vitamin D3 if you're actually getting out in the sun for around 20 minutes per day, ideally in the morning, getting direct sunlight. Your body can make all the vitamin D3 it needs from the sun, but so many of us don't get out in the sun because we have busy jobs, um, or if you have darker pigmented skin, you need even more time in the sun. Um, so vitamin D3 supplementation is still a good idea, but I would also recommend you get out in the sun. Um, so that's the D3. Next thing is some kind of source of omega-3s. People often call these fish oils, but they really are special kinds of fats that our body uses as anti-inflammatory in nature. And as we're strength training, we're going to start to create a little more inflammation in our joints because we're using them a little bit more. Fish oils are going to help control the inflammation. They can help you recover better from your exercise. They're good for your heart health, your brain health. They're absolutely fantastic. And omega-3s are not just found in fish. They certainly are. Things like wild salmon and sardines are great sources. But if you're going on a vegan vegetarian style here, you can also get this from flax. Now, the, the omega-3s in plant-based sources are not as bioavailable. They're about 10% as bioavailable. But if you're getting a tablespoon or so of flax seeds, or if you're having some hemp seeds, or you're eating walnuts in your diet, you can get plenty of omega-3s from plant-based sources, or you can also get a plant-based uh, omega-3 supplement as well. Definitely need these in your routine. And the final thing is a probiotic. Probiotics are those good digestive gut bacteria that line our entire digestive tract. And here's the thing. When most people think about nutrition, they're just thinking about foods and calories. They're not thinking about digestion, how that food's actually broken down and then assimilated into the body. Probiotics help you digest your foods. They keep your entire gastrointestinal tract in line. They actually help keep you leaner. If you have the right kinds of probiotics, your body burns fat better. And I bet there's gonna be new, some new research in the next few years showing that certain strains of probiotics are associated with better muscle building as well. So I recommend you take a probiotic supplement, but also you could be getting this from fermented foods. Things like kefir, which is a fermented yogurt. Things like um, sauerkraut kimchi, um, things like natto, some of these foods that are fermented, um, kombucha could be another example. All these fermented foods, get more of those in your diet. They will help your muscle building, your health results over the long term. And the final supplement that is optional, but definitely could be encouraged, I guess would be creatine monohydrate. Creatine monohydrate is an incredibly safe supplement. It actually boosts muscle building. It actually boosts your strength. Um, and it's a good supplement. It's safe for beginners and intermediates and advanced trainees alike. And you want to take probably three to five grams um, after you exercise with maybe 20 to 25 grams of protein. So again, you don't need to have necessarily have a protein powder. You can get all your protein from foods, but it's a convenient kind of thing. So if there was a post-workout shake, which is not necessary for muscle building, but it is convenient, I would probably say 25 grams of some kind of protein you love, whether it's whey or plant based and then around three to five grams of creatine and that would be your post-workout shake and then you have a meal shortly after so that is the supplement side of this thing it is the least important thing we've discussed today because if you're strength training well and you're eating the right kinds of foods and you're sleeping and you're hydrating supplements are supplemental yes they will help i would definitely say get the multi the d3 the omega-3 probiotics but supplements aren't going to make you build muscle it's all these good principles we've already discussed in today's video um, so final thing is I know this is a lot of info. I want to help you make this actionable, and I actually would love to just hand you the straight up plan. We have that old school muscle building program that gives you the full supplement stack, all the meal plans, all the recipes, um, the exact workout routine, all the form guides of all the different exercises, and it is full body strength training like we discussed today. Um, we have that for you. It's linked in the description. It's just 97 bucks. It's an amazing program. If you're not ready to jump into full program, you want to experiment some more, then I want to recommend you scroll below and get our free video on the five best muscle building exercises, and then we're going to follow up with you via email. We'll send that video to your email. And I'm also going to give you some advanced training straight to your email from me on your nutrition, on your supplementation, et cetera, so we can keep this momentum going. I hope this video starts as an inspiration for you to show you that there's an amazing possibility of you improving your life, your health, your energy, your strength. If you start strength training properly, these are the principles I would have told myself back when I was 10, and now you can use them today. So thanks for being here, my friend. I hope you found this valuable. If you like this and you learned something, give me a thumbs up here on YouTube. It means a lot to me and my Fit Father Project team um, that you give us a thumbs up and you drop a comment below and you let us know that this was helpful. And if you want more stuff like this on muscle building, 
fat loss, form tutorials, how to get and stay motivated on your health journey, then subscribe to our Fit Father Project YouTube channel. We literally have over 500 videos on the channel right now talking about important topics like muscle building. We'll link some of them in the description below, like muscle building meal prep. And when you subscribe, you're gonna get notified when we publish new videos. They'll come up into your YouTube feed and we're gonna always give you valuable stuff straight to the point like this, me teaching you, you learning, you improving. This is what we're about here at the Fit Father Project. So thank you, my friend. Hope you found this valuable. Give us a thumbs up, like, drop a comment below, subscribe, and I'll see you in future videos. I'll see you in those free resources. Hopefully I'll see you in Old School Muscle Program, and I'll talk to you very soon.